Hi, I'm Mark. This is my journey through tarot. Come on with me. Okay, now today it's going to be a four card oracle with diet at cross divination at the end. So four cards, you pick one of them or two of them or three of them or all of them, uh, decide what your question is, and then we'll do a, an extended uh, divination uh, afterwards. So let's do it. Okay, so today is the four card uh, oracle. So we're going to use these past life oracle cards for those four cards, and then we'll uh, expand that uh, reading with um, this impressionist tarot. But before I pick this card up, I, I just noticed um, that the coloring from this pack just perfectly blends with the coloring in this pack right here. I mean, that's pretty cool. So uh, past life oracle cards first, and then we're going to do the impressionist tarot to uh, flesh out the divination for all of that. You know, I think I'm going to show you both these cards right up front, and uh, and then we'll start the um, the uh, the show. So these are great, I guess. Doreen Virtue and Brian Weiss. And um, let's see. Let's uh, show you what's in here. They're interesting cards. Uh, they don't follow uh, any system that I'm aware of. Uh, perhaps Doreen Virtue and Brian Weiss are some mystics that I haven't studied. Uh, but they do have very interesting uh, points on them, and uh, I've used them once before, and it worked out pretty well. And so it seems to me that um, when they, these cards were created, there must have been some thoughtful intention um, in there, I'm going to say. Uh, so we'll shuffle these up, and then um, I'm going to go right to showing you the next set that we're going to use, which is the Impressionist Tarot. And I've used these a few times now. This is Corinne Kenner with the artwork by Arturo Pica, Impressionist Tarot. And these are amazing cards. They actually use, I thought it was four artists, but they use five different artists, uh, actual drawings to, uh, or not drawings, but uh, paintings. You know, let me see if I can find those artists' name in here quickly. And, uh, and just so you know that. Because I'm trying to, as I uh, use these cards, um, understand uh, which uh, works of art uh, is in each one. And I don't think I'm going to find it quickly, so I'll just have to leave it up to you. But it's an amazing deck. This book is very useful um, and thoughtfully written, uh, besides the beautiful artwork that's in there. But you know, as I think about it, I'm sure that these, those artists I was mentioning are right here. So yeah, the Impressionists. So the, the Impressionists in this deck were uh, Edward Manet, uh, Claude Monet, uh, Pierre Auguste Renoir, and Edgar Degas. So those, those were the four Impressionists that I was thinking of. But if I had just taken a minute, there were some post-Impressionists also included in these works, which of course were Vincent van Gogh and Paul uh, Gauguin. So those are the six artists whose work is used to create these cards. And it could be that, and then of course, um, uh, Arturo Pica has uh, in, on occasion added some elements to make them more relevant uh, to the uh, to the divination of the Rider Waite system. So there we go. And now the cards themselves are great and disappointing. And I've known people like that actually in my life who are great and also disappointing. But the cards themselves, they're, they're neat because they look like the back of a piece of art. You've got the little cardboard shims or some tape that are holding the picture perfectly in place. You see the little uh, catch up here where you would hang this thing on the wall. And then uh, when you look at the art itself on the other time, um, on the other side, I'm sorry, uh, it's uh, very uh, uh, easy to uh, interpret. The, the failing with these cards is that after all this nice presentation, the beautiful book with the great box, the amazing idea of them, that they're cheap cards. You know, they're not the best cards they could be, and that's such a shame. So I hope maybe in another printing they'll come out with some better cards, and, uh, and I'd, I'd buy them. I'd buy them again. But uh, we'll put those to the side, and we'll start out with this Oracle four card you pick for today. So again, like I always say, clear, clear, clear your mind. You know, take a deep breath, just like this. If you need to, do that a few times and just relax. Stop the tape, 
you know, get yourself together. Go get some water. Uh, make yourself comfortable. And then come back and start the tape again and, um, and make your choices. So I'm going to do a shuffle and a cut. And then we will choose four cards for this four card oracle today. These are really beautiful cards. They also suffer from, like the other cards, being a, a great idea and just with uh, not great cards used to execute the idea. So, and now we'll do number four. Okay, so put all these away. Take them out of the uh, frame, as a matter of fact, because we won't need them anymore. Uh, put these over here, and then we'll talk about them one at a time. The first card, if that's what you chose, is Spouse. So that's a very nice uh, card to choose. And if I take a minute and really look at this card carefully, you, the gentleman is, and, and, the, uh, and the newlyweds here are really gently giving each other a lovely kiss. They're uh, sheltered under a nice parasol and uh, just a lovely wedding that they've attended here. They perfectly uh, fit together in this picture. And so spouse and all of that, what I described there is what your spouse should be to you, a complete complement to every part of your life. And you should be to your spouse. And uh, it doesn't have to be a, a, a married uh, by the law of your community spouse. You know, once you commit yourself to someone, uh, there was, I'm sure, a time very long ago when once you made that commitment, you were each other's spouse. And the rest of this uh, legalese that we uh, occurs in today's world is kind of uh, just our uh, man's law. But uh, love is the, is the real de de determining factor. So spouse, beautiful card if you pick that. And if it's not clear to you how this figures into your issue that you raised, then the divination hopefully will do that for you. So spouse, nice card to start off with. Number two card, authority figures. So this is interesting. And this is uh, really <laughs> hammering home the idea that um, uh, authority figures uh, are really uh, contributing to this uh, issue that you're dealing with. Uh, this mallet, and I don't know what this little uh, thing here is called, but is really hammering down on a book of what? Knowledge or rules? And so authority figures um, is what we're going to concentrate on when uh, we do the divination for that card. The number three card, uh, if that's what you chose, is forgiveness. And you know, forgiveness is everything. If you're hanging on to something that that could be forgiven and let's face it everything 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 can be forgiven everything can be forgiven a death a, 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 a thoughtless death um, a hurtful remark um, you know whatever it is when you aren't trying to embrace forgiveness you're just poisoning your well the person that you're not forgiving uh, only has to deal with that your that issue when they're in your presence or when they might happen to flick across their mind. You might happen to flick across their mind, but you carry that burden of not having forgiveness constantly. So it's a gift to yourself, forgiveness. Okay. Now the fourth card, if that's the one you chose, is medicine man or woman. Medicine man or woman. Love this card. This has the uh, uh, American Indian symbol of a rain uh, of a dream catcher here and the way it's depicted here it's almost like this hand is playing these puppets uh, over here and so the medicine man or woman is simply the person in your environment who has the knowledge the experience and the uh, willingness to uh, to show you uh, to share with you their knowledge towards solving uh, your issue and uh, you know we need medicine in our in our bodies uh, we need this kind of medicine in our minds and uh, following this kind of medicine in our life is going to make things uh, easier for us, I would presume. But anyway, those are the four uh, issues that we're going to deal with today uh, with these die. Uh, who is she? She's Doreen Virtue uh, who made these cards. So spouse, authority figures, forgiveness, medicine man or medicine woman. Until we get to them, I'm going to leave the ones that we're not uh, talking about over. These are not yes or no cards. So if you ask a yes or no question, let's see what happens in this part of the uh, of the process. So here we go with the Impressionist Tarot. Impressionist Tarot is what this is. And um, like I said, love these cards. Don't love the quality of the paper that they're on. But everything else about them is really, really great. 
so spouse. So how is, let's try this again. Let's do spouse this way. Let's divide the cards into two and then put them back into one because that's what a spouse is. It's the oneness of the two of you, okay? So spouse, let's see, how does spouse uh, figure into this reading? We're going to do six cards, that short uh, dyadic cross, to try to determine uh, how this uh, number one card is going to be useful in your life, at least for today. Okay, and we'll do a shuffle. Darn you, you don't want to shuffle. So what is it about spouse that's making this difficult to put together? We'll do a couple more times. Spouse, spouse. What is it about spouse? And maybe you don't have a spouse. Maybe um, that's what the issue is of putting these cards together. Maybe some of you are looking for a spouse. Maybe some of you are looking to get rid of a spouse. So let's see what the cards tell us. We're going to do six and then uh, go from there. So this will be one, two, three, four, five, and six. Spouse. What is it about spouse that we can clarify for everyone today? Spouse. Okay. So this will be uh, significant to the reading, although it won't be part of the dyadic cross. Okay. The signifier card for this reading concerning uh, spouse, or maybe even just partnerships, um, is the Seven of Swords. And, you know, this, eventually I'll be able to tell you when I use these cards what artists uh, are represented in the card, but I haven't gotten there yet. I have to study the book a bit more. But um, anyway, this Seven of Swords, Seven of Swords is usually uh, a betrayal, a theft, a, uh, a trying to get away with, uh, an, an injustice of rules, of, of truths, of the law. And uh, or of we, just what we know should be uh, uh, right, and it's being done wrong. And so, uh, so the signifier in this is um, in this situation to recognize when there's been some wrongdoing of some sort. The challenge to that, the challenge to recognizing that, is going to be the Knight of Cups. You know, that's what you need uh, when you have uh, this sort of an issues in a relationship, in a partnership. I mean, this could even uh, loosely talk about a business relationship or a working partnership. So I know uh, sometimes uh, we'll have a, a work wife or a work husband. You know what I mean? Someone that we depend on at work and we can share a few little emotional tidbits about our about our uh, uh, limited situation that we may have with them. So spouse. So something's not uh there's something amiss here. It has to do with truth. It has to do with justice. It has to do with, with rules, something along those lines. Okay. And the challenge to it being this uh, Knight of Cups, you know, the Knight comes to us with a, a nice helping of compassion. And uh, I tell you what, that's something we could use no matter what the issue is. But this Knight has stopped. He's um, pulled his horse uh, to the side gently to say, let's take a sip from this beautiful cup of compassion or emotion that I brought along. Let's share a drink and see if we can't uh, work this out. So that's the challenge. It is always a challenge when you felt like something's been done against you, or even if you've done something against someone, that may be even the harder time for you to turn around and show some compassion. The base of the reading then is the Eight of Cups. And the Eight of Cups is typically um, walking away from something or you know leaving something behind. This Eight of Cups in this, uh, in this scenario is actually a train that's coming down the track and he'll be able to go straight. He'll be able to turn depending on what his direction is supposed to be. And he's going to leave behind all these, uh, these Eight Cups of compassion, of emotion. So, um, I mean, it could talk about um, distancing ourselves from this very important compassionate issue. I love how uh, this knight brought these cups forward, this cup forward, and uh, this card is telling us that we may have to uh, take a slow roll past the compassion uh, to get where we need to go. Um, the past of this reading, then, is the Two of Pentacles. And the Two of Pentacles, you know, that's always uh, maintaining a balance, maintaining maintaining a, uh, a practiced dance. These two lovely uh, ballerinas are at the bar, right here, the ballerina, I don't know what they call it, I think it's just called a bar, getting ready to practice their steps to keep everything perfectly balanced in their routine that they're working together. And that's how we start out uh, when we uh, when we first find our spouse. We're looking 
for how do we do that dance? And then um, perhaps, and not just a spouse, like I said, this could be a work relationship, this could be a business partnership, but um, then trying to find that balance, that perfect dance, getting the steps just right, uh, can lead to um, uh, betrayal or uh, abuse and uh, or even the suspicion of or the feeling that this has been what's been going on. So we want to take a second with some compassion and do a slow roll past the issues. Uh, in the sky of this reading is uh, the, um, oh my gosh, is this the moon or the sun? This is the sun. And so the sun, you know what, but I want to double check because I just don't feel comfortable that it's really the sun. So forgive me for my... Uh, you know that I'm not perfect. Look at that. It's the same one that's on the front here. And let's see if we can uh, quickly, quickly uh, find that picture of the sun. And it is what? It is uh, uh, 19. So it's going to be further back this way. 19. It's 21. Hope you guys don't mind that I do this. And it is the sun. You know, I have to trust my... Um, my my uh, intuitions. And this is a Claude Monet impression sunrise of 1872. How nice. Uh, when Impressionist Sunrise hung at the Impressionist first exhibit in 1874, art critic Louis Leroy used the title to mock the artist's work. To the classically trained eye, the image seemed raw and incomplete back in 1872, probably because Monet painted it in 40 minutes, racing against time to capture the light. That's nice to know. But anyway, so this is the sun, and the sun uh, is is just that, telling us that let's let's let the light drench the moment, and it can be fleeting. It can be that we really need to look for that. But the great thing about the sun is it's going to come again tomorrow, and so God willing, if you're there, and it, you know you'll see it again and be able to take another shot at that moment. But that's where that slow roll comes in. If you've missed your opportunity, you may need to wait and perfectly time it so that you can uh, get this done again. Perfect timing for letting the light in on this issue, I think is really important to whatever's going on here. In the um, final outcome of this, again, it's uh, temperance. Uh, so temperance, these are major arcanas, by the way, temperance and, um, and uh, the sun. And so uh, it's telling us that we have to get the perfect mix. Or it, the best result is going to be when we have this perfectly tempered, perfectly balanced, perfectly attended to. So that's a lovely, lovely uh, message, I think, for those cards. Okay, so now we'll go on to the next. Oh, my goodness. What did I do? No, that's correct. That was the first, the first one. Okay, so the next card is going to be authority figures, authority figures, and that's always a, a difficult uh, thing to deal with. Look how uh, much easier the cards uh, worked this time. I say as I make them harder. Shame on me. But um, authority figures. So let's get these cards redirected towards authority figures. Authority figures for card number two. <laughs> I don't know. I should rename myself the Clumsy uh, Tarot Reader, I think. Maybe I'll start a second channel like that. Got to get this channel going, though, first, don't I? So, authority figures. How do authority figures play into our issue here? Six cards. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five, and six. Authority figures. Authority figures. Okay, you guys work on that, and we'll start this divination dealing with authority figures. The signifier for this, this is the Two of Wands. The Two of Wands. And, um, you know, the Two of Wands speaks to us of planning. And look how well this was planned. We have two of these uh, lovely little uh, birds here. I don't know what they are. We have the two parasols uh, ready to go out uh, for the day. And uh, this uh, person has really made some thoughtful planning about what's going to happen for this day. This isn't a long-term plan. This is the plan for now. Authority figures as it has to do with a short plan. The challenge to this then is, um, oh my gosh, what are you? Five, uh, 15, 17, 17, 
Well, guys, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to put up with my ineptitude as I look up this card. I don't remember what uh, 17 of the Major Arcana is. If you're a tarot reader, I bet you know right away, and you're probably just yelling at the, at the uh, screen, it's this, it's this. Um, and it is, in fact, the star. Huh, I really wouldn't have guessed that this is the star, except for that Starry Night, I think, is the name of this. Uh, yeah, it sure is. So this is a Vincent Van Gogh, The Starry Night. The Starry Night is arguably Van Gogh's most famous work, and of course I couldn't guess it, uh, from the time he arrived in Arles in 1888. Uh, or it should, I should say, from the time he arrived in Arles in 1888, he wanted to capture the countryside's night effects. In April, a letter to his brother Theo, he wrote, I need a starry night with cypresses or, uh, or maybe above a field of ripe wheat. <laughs> so starry night, the star. I won't forget that one again. So... Um, here we have the uh, Two of Wands, short-term plans, and uh, the star, which really tells us in the typical right away tradition that the, the, the light is shown on this uh, person, the star. They are capturing the attention of everything. And uh, so uh, as it has to do with authority figures, let's uh, try to see how this would apply. So when we're making a plan, but it's challenged by the star. You know, I think I'm going to have to go a bit further before I can come back and put this together. Um, the base of this reading, then, is the One of Pentacles, so the Ace of Pentacles, and this is a big uh, offer of value. So this uh, ballerina is really just dancing her heart out. She's sh giving it everything that she's got, and she's offering it up to you for your enjoyment. So the base of this reading is really uh, something uh, where someone just said, here it is. This is the value. And um, we have to think about authority figures. I don't think I'm going to put this together until close to the end. Um, the past for this reading, then, maybe you have some ideas. The past for this reading, then, is the Two of Swords. And so, so far, we've got two twos in this uh, meeting here. Um, okay, so the Two of Swords is picking a path, choosing a direction. Which way are we going to go? We've got these two swords on this billiards table. And uh, so someone is trying to line up their shot, I would guess, and decide what's the best way that they could achieve success. So, you know, if you're doing that, it does, you know, jive with making plans. Uh, just this star and this big offer of value have got me um, uh, perplexed regarding authority figures. Sorry, I haven't been able to give you an answer to this yet, but let's get to the end. Uh, the Nine of Swords. And the Nine of Swords is really nightmares, uh, worry, uh, distress. Although this uh, young person seemed to be very comfortably sleeping. <clears throat> they seem to somehow uh, not be aware of the danger that uh, is right above them. I mean, one of these things can fall off the wall, and uh, that's that's not a good thing. So authority figures, authority figures. Um, when we're making our plans, let's take into consideration what what is the best way to go about it. What would be the proper way to go about it? Uh, what someone uh, with some experience would tell us uh, how to, to go about this. And let's uh, consider this. Uh, let's consider this thoughtfully. The challenge uh, to starting to make those plans is the light being shown uh, on them, uh, maybe creating too much um, emphasis on the planning, um, perhaps. Um, it came to us as a big offer. Okay, so we got something of value and we had to make a plan. And we had just come off of deciding what direction we were going to take this, this maybe our, our life into. And uh, someone said, well, no, we're going to make it this way. And then the aim in this is to carefully consider all the obstacles, all the dangers uh, that could come into your way. And then for the final outcome of this, we're going to have the night of the night of wands, the night of planning. Of course we are. This knight is taking his plan. He's taking his wand. He's taking his action. He's taking his movement off to execute it. He looks very determined uh, in this fact, and uh, he's gripped onto that uh, onto that uh, sword, uh, that wand, and uh, is getting ready to trot off to execute his plan. So, and it's interesting that this knight does sort of represent an authority figure. So, I'm going to try to talk about it one more time. So, regarding authority figures, somehow we've come to a point where we have to make a, a choice. We have to make a plan. We have to decide how we're going to go about this thing. It's really become uh, uh, brilliant. It's become uh, clear. Uh, the this uh, situation. Uh, it came to us as a big offer of value. Um, again, having to decide how we're going to go about it. We have to be careful and consider the nightmare that can happen if uh, if we're not uh, careful 
about uh, the issues that are involved, but we need to go ahead and, and move it forward. Uh, and we will move it forward, as a matter of fact, as this final outcome. That was a little difficult for me, if you couldn't tell. So now we're going to go on to the third card in this divination. Really a little clumsy today. Third card in this one is forgiveness. Love that one. Love that one a lot. That's a hard, that's a hard one sometimes to, to master. Uh, forgiveness. Forgiveness. Peace stubs there fluttering around each other. Uh, forgiveness. Forgiveness. What can you tell us cards about forgiveness right now for the issues that folks have who chose that as their card today? Forgiveness. Forgive me for being so clumsy with these cards today. Forgiveness. Okay. Again, I'm going to do six. So this will be one, two, three. Four, five, and six. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. So the signified card you chose number three, forgiveness, is um, hmm, it's the eight of swords. The eight of swords is really feeling trapped. Really feeling um, as if you can't make a move. Your hands are tied. You're up against it. Um, it's a it's a it's a worry and you don't want to move forward but you know the thing is is that if you if you consider what's going on look you can move out this way easily you can move out this way easily you can turn around this pole and maybe go in the other direction so the signifier in this card is be aware of your trappings okay now these are you know swords are rules uh truths justices um so that's what we've got there and the challenge to that again how about that i know what this card is it's uh the stars and so the star, again, is shining down on this um, in Van Gogh's Starry Night. And, uh, and um, the challenge to being trapped is that if you look around, it's very clear what path you, have to, you can take. Uh, the basis of this reading, then, ooh, is the tower. And so something uh, has occurred. Something this, this started out, or this may have the potential to be a definite tower moment. And, uh, you know, while we can be weary of a terror moment, we have, don't have to be deathly afraid of it. It just means that this issue or whatever led to this issue came to a stop. OK, it was completely uh, hollowed out. And uh, then the past of this reading is going to be the king of swords and the king, uh, king of wands. I'm sorry. The king of wands. He's a very solid looking king with this uh, staff of uh, movement, of planning, of action right here. Uh, he's up on the balcony, and it's like he's almost showing us, okay, I have this plan. We're going to have to make it go forward. So it's almost like he was standing uh, in the window of the castle saying, well, okay, this is what we're going to do now. And uh, whoever caused this, let's, uh, let's get past that and start to build again. So uh, I almost forgot to include the spirit of forgiveness in this reading, so I'll try to include it as we go forward. Uh, in the sky for this reading, is the Knight of Swords, the Knight of Rules, the Knight of Justice, the Knight of Planning. And so he's bringing forward. This knight looks very determined. He's off his steed. He's, he's, he's stomping up. He's walking up with his justice in hand and ready to wield it. Uh, so that's what we need to do. We need to know that uh, we can have forgiveness, but at the same time, we can strive for justice and follow the plans. Um, the likely outcome for this, then, is the three of uh, wands and the three of wands where the two of wands is a short-term plan the three of wands is making a long-term arrangement and i've got to tell you it almost looks like these two that this fellow is asking for forgiveness or or it looks like he's doing the begging uh of this woman for forgiveness as uh, they consider their long-term plans it almost looks like there was a race in the background here but but yeah so the outcome of this is is finding forgiveness i love how these two cards really tie to each other. This is forgiveness and this uh, portends forgiveness. So again, let's talk about it. So forgiveness, you find yourself bound up for whatever reason it is. There's, there's light on the issue. It, it started from a disaster. Um, we have a plan to go forward. Uh, we're going to go forward with, with truth and justice. And all the while, we have to look for forgiveness either from us or ask, ask it to us. Ask for forgiveness. OK. 
Okay, so that's what we've got there. Now, the last uh, card, the last oracle, number four, if that's what you chose, right here, is Medicine Man or Medicine Woman. Medicine Man or Medicine Woman. Medicine Man or Medicine Woman. So let's do this into four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Medicine Man or Medicine Woman. Let's take six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Medicine Man, Medicine Woman. Put those cards out of the frame because we don't need them anymore. So this is going to be the guiding principle of this uh, divination right here. The signifier for number four card, Medicine Man or Medicine Woman. Ah, is the Ace of Swords. Ace of Swords, again, it's a big offer of justice. It's a big offer of the rules of, of, of uh, what's right. Okay, so that's how we started out with the Medicine Man or the Medicine uh, Woman here. They um, can tell us um, uh, what this justice is. The challenge to that, however, is uh, the Seven of Wands. And the Seven of Wands is kind of feeling as if you're, you're, you've got these issues uh, under control. Not that they won't be uh, something to deal with, because look, you're going to have to work your way around all these plans, all these actions, all this motion in order to get to this resonance right here, or whatever this building is. But um, the, um, the challenge uh, to this big offer of, of justice or of, of right is uh, knowing how to maneuver uh, around uh, these plans. Um, and how are you going to get that knowledge? Except maybe to speak to someone who knows better than you do. The basis of this reading, again, that's fascinating, is the tower. So we had a tower moment here. We had a, a definite stop, really shook us to understand that we needed to uh, make this, uh, seek this, uh, this guidance. The past of this reading is the King of Swords. And the King of Swords, this is a very determined King of Swords. He has planted his sword in front of him. It's a huge uh, tool of justice or, or, or rules. And yeah, so I think we had um, someone who was giving us a hint. Oh, you know what? This is Pentacles. It's not a uh, sword. So let me rethink this whole thing. And so the King of Pentacles, the King of Pentacles. Okay, so this fella is in complete charge of his value. Um, he's got uh, the goods to to share, to, to make this. So we came off of, I think, of someone who could have given us this information, okay, to um, find this justice, to find this truth, uh, how to maneuver to get to the uh, entrance uh, of our, our, our issue once we uh, had the issue. And then in the sky of this, again, we had this in the first reading, I think it was, is the seven of uh, swords and feeling as if we've been stolen from, as if we've been wronged. The likely outcome of all of this, again, the same cards again. It's fascinating to me how once, every time I do these oracle readings, it seems like the same cards want to stay with me and reinterpret uh, everything. But the, uh, the starry night. Uh, light shining down on the problem. So yeah, uh, with the proper um, help, with the proper knowledge, going to people who know what to do, that's what has to be done here to get to the end. Okay? So that's what we have for the four Oracle readings today. And I really pray that uh, what I've said has somehow struck a chord with you and has uh, made something in your life easier. So, that's very interesting. We started with spouse or partnerships for the number one card, if that's what you chose. Uh, we went into authority figures, number two, uh, if that's what you chose. We uh, learned about forgiveness, number three, if that's what you chose. And then uh, seek advice from someone who knows what they're doing, number four. And uh, so that's what I have for this four-card oracle with divination. I hope it was useful for you today. Uh, I hope you uh, ponder over it a bit as you go through your day and see if it doesn't uh, work out in some way. Okay? Well, my name's Mark. This is my journey through tarot. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching these videos. It means something to me that I spend the time to make them and you spend the time to watch them. And I really go into them with the best of intentions. And if you're not doing anything tomorrow, stop on by because I'll be here and we'll go somewhere else tomorrow. Ciao for now.